Move is very hard. Forget it. He'll never get up. Two good right hands. And now Mercer on Morrison in the corner. And Mercer's all over. And Morrison in trouble. And Morrison goes down for the first time in his career. And the referee should stop it. That's enough. That's enough. It's all over. That's it. Oh, and down goes the referee. Down goes the referee. This is Boxing Bedlam. Welcome to what you are about to discover is the often funny and sometimes bizarre world of boxing. On these screens behind me is just a taste of the explosive action coming your way as we feature some of the wildest and wackiest fights in ring history. For our first walk on the wild side, let me bring you face to face with a man mountain who's become something of an icon in the United States. They don't come wackier than this. This is Eric Esch, better known as Butterbean, who weighs in at more than 22 stone. He's billed as the four-round champion of the world and is a monster favourite with American fight fans. See what you think. 22 KOs from Jasper, Alabama. Here is the IBA four-round super heavyweight champion, an American legend, Butterbean. The guy's just hit me. Watch out for him, bro. He'll come back at him. An explosive start the other way. Butterbean survived that first punch shot to force a questionable draw, but he left no room for argument when he defended his manufactured four round title against Kenny Woods. We joined the fight in the second round. Just fire as many punches as you could as quickly as possible to try to win those rounds. And there was no such thing as style and technique. And if you fire jabs, they might throw you out of the tournament. I think Bean is getting a little impatient here. He might have set a world's record for missing on a right hand. That last punch he lost. Oh, down goes Woods. This fight is over. Woods' head hit the canvas very hard. Forget it. He'll never get up. Against Kurt Allen, Butterbean nearly ran out of gas chasing after his opponent before trapping him in this corner and cutting loose with a no-holds-barred, two-fisted attack. throwing his body in it. Allen doing everything he can to stay on his feet. Listen oh. to this crowd reaction. As Eric S. Butterbean goes to work, he's got Allen between the ropes, in trouble. Jane 80 gets between the two and stops the fight. Wow. Not the easiest of victories for Butterbean. He had some problems for two and a half rounds, but then when he got his man... And for our final panoramic look at one of the ring's truly colossal characters, we join Butterbean as he attempts to cut down Ed White in round two of what was literally a battle of the giants. Now he tries to follow it up. White actually took it very well, though. But now he gets clocked, another left hook, and the bean coming forward and encouraged by the fans. Bean trying to certainly punch him, and he does that with a right hand. trying to make it up to his feet. Cortez went down himself. Finally got Bean to a neutral corner. Gets White with some extra seconds of rest. 
Butter bean is like a modern day two ton Tony Galento. But I can assure you that Tony, our moided bum Galento, fought a better class of opponent. Joe Lewis to name but one. Timber! Goodness, no wonder they say in the United States that Butterbean is big box office. Now, I experienced a few hairy nights at the ringside long before Butterbean came on the scene, but none quite to match the occasion when Adam Minter defended his world middleweight title against a fellow Southpaw, glorifying in the name of marvellous Marvin Hagler. This was the occasion when Minter, unwisely in my view, helped stoke up an unhealthy and unsavoury atmosphere at the Wembley ringside. He said during the build-up to the fight that he wasn't going to let a black man take the title away from him. It was an unfortunate remark, and it brought the racists crawling out of their holes. You could almost smell that there was going to be trouble. You need to look red as well. Good left hand for Minter. And this pair really are launching the most savage attacks at each other. And we're only six minutes into the fight. That really was a very fierce round indeed. Minton now got a mark underneath the right eye, one underneath the left eye. That's the third one that's appeared. Hagler's head rubbing in against him. Carlos Barakal, the Panamanian referee, having trouble keeping them apart. And Minter's picking up hard punches as he tries to fight back. He's being forced into a real war. He's smothered in blood, Minter, and he's in desperate trouble in the third round. He can't keep the man away. Hagler will not be denied. And Minter's left eye is in real trouble, and the referee stopped it so that they can have a look at it. It is a really very bad cut over Minter's left eye, and it stopped! It stopped in the third round, and Hagler's on his knees, acclaiming his victory. He said he was the rightful champion. And he's won it in three rounds, and people are throwing beer cans. One's landed on me. Beer cans are being hurled in all over the ring. There's a fight started over Hagler. Somebody's attacking him. And there is chaos here, absolute chaos. I'm smothered in beer, so are all my colleagues around me. And people are trying to attack Hagler. Police are trying to move into the ring to protect Hagler. Oh, I've been struck on the head by a bottle. And this is the worst scenes we've ever seen at Wembley in any boxing ring in this country. It's absolute chaos. The crowd are mad with this. And clearly they're accusing Hagler of using his head against Minter and causing Minter to lose the world title. And the rage has broken out all around Wembley. And these scenes are a shame and a disgrace to British boxing. My old mate Reg Gutteridge remarked with his customary wit that it was the first time the drinks had been on me. Eight years earlier, I'd been at the Villa Park ringside to see Jack Bodell and Danny McAlinden in a brawl for the British heavyweight title that wouldn't have been out of place on the cobbles. The open air in this country for five years. Good right hand from McAlinden, and Bodell felt that. And we're not a minute into the fight, and McAlinden is going for a quick win. And everything now must depend on how well Bodell's chin can stand up to these right hands which are getting through. And Bodell grips his teeth, and the titles are beginning to slip from his grasp. And McAlinden grins all over his face as they wrestle each other to the floor. Because McAlinden can see now that the titles are within his grasp in the first round.
everything now depends on whether Baudel can survive another 45 seconds. He can't miss that lantern jaw. The chin is stuck out there to be hit, and McAlinden is going to hit it. And he wrestles Bodell to the floor once again for the second time. And we've got ten seconds to go. And Bodell is going, but the bell is going to rescue him. And Bodell throws one after the bell because he's so confused and dazed. He doesn't know where he is, and look at his legs. He's gone. Can McAlinden now take the titles? They may well be there for the taking. And George Smith, the referee from Scotland, says, don't let's have so much wrestling. They've been on the floor twice together already. This Aston Villa soccer ground, the setting for a sensation, the right hand. 20 seconds into the second round, and Bodell's on his way out. He looks to a corner, but it's the wrong corner. Impetuosity now is the only thing that can lose McAlinden this chance. Bodell trying to get the sense back in his head. And McAlinden is going delirious trying to get these two titles from Bodell. He's got him again. And he puts in as many as he can get before Bodell goes through the ropes. One minute and five seconds into the second round. One of the most sensational fights we've seen for years. Everything getting through. And George Smith will have to think about stopping it if this goes on like this. Go on, Go on, sensation following sensation. Again, right in the same place. And he rolls over on his back and Bodell is beaten. He's beaten. And it, victory being declared before Smith had even counted the man out. And Bodell has been knocked out. Supporters of McAlinden are climbing over me and everybody else as this 25-year-old McAlinden has taken two titles here tonight at Aston Villa in one of the most sensational fights and the most sensational scenes you've ever seen in British boxing. And the ring will hardly support all these people if many more get in. This is fantastic. McAlinden is the new British heavyweight champion. The ring invasion that followed the McAlinden Bodell fight was a celebration. But when Riddick Bowe battled with Andrew Galotta in New York's Madison Square Garden, there was an evil atmosphere at the end of the fight. Galotta looked on the way to an upset victory, but crazily threw it all away by persistently landing illegal low blows. The referee issued severe warnings to Galotta in the sixth and seventh rounds for punches that sank well south of the border. In the closing stages of the seventh, Galotta went a punch too far with his below-the-belt deliveries and the referee disqualified him. This sparked one of the worst ring riots in boxing history. One of Bo's supporters attacked Galotta with a mobile telephone, which gave a whole new meaning to taking an obscene phone call. There'd never been scenes like it as Madison Square Garden, the ancestral home of American boxing, was turned into a battlefield. The ring was heaving with angry supporters trying to settle private arguments. While all this was going on, Galata's manager, Lou Dover, was suffering heart problems and had to receive emergency treatment in the ring before being rushed off to hospital. Security guards battled in vain to bring some semblance of order and sanity to the ring but they were outnumbered by warring supporters from both sides. 
Once again, there was the horrible stench of racism in the air, as there had been that terrible night at Wembley during the Hagler Minter riot, but that was like a picnic compared to what went on here at Madison Square Garden. It was sheer bedlam for nearly an hour after the fight, and extra police were called to the arena as fighting broke out all around the place. There were running battles going on 50 yards away from the ring, as well as at ringside, where totally innocent people were being terrorised and dragged into the fighting in unprecedented scenes of mindless violence. Just look at this. It's a wonder nobody was killed. It came as no surprise that there were some hefty fines handed out following an inquiry into a night and a fight that shamed boxing. Riddick Bowe was a constant companion of controversy throughout his headline-hitting career. Four years before that war with Glotter, he was involved in one of the most incredible ring scenes of modern times. The trouble was again triggered by a disqualification, this time at the end of round one. It's the ideal fight with which to start our next sequence, which is a collection of the odd, the offbeat, and the downright crazy. The more times you see it, the less believable it becomes. The Riddick Bow now, he's got to control his thoughts, put his punches together, and put him in there. Oh, second warning for holding from Carl Milligan. And he is likely to get more. Bo has uh, 26 wins, 23 knockouts, nine of those in the first round. Going for double figures tonight. Is the that a knockdown? Hook. That was a left hook. You Great cannot Bo. be saved by the bell. It's here at the final bell that all hell breaks loose. Watch out for Bo's volcanic manager, Rock Newman, playing a crazy cameo role in one of the most incredible boxing moments ever captured on camera. Tillery had to be treated on the floor by the ring after his unorthodox exit. He could easily have broken his back but luckily, he had no lasting injury, just a bruised backside and a bruised ego. He clambered back into the ring some five minutes later to be greeted with the news that he'd been disqualified for kicking. Let's take another look at those amazing last moments when the Queensbury rules went out of the window. At the end of the first, Elijah Tillery went down and then a fight broke out. Incredible conclusion to round number one. Carl Milliken, the referee, they go at it again. There were still several seconds to go. It seemed like a long round. There's the bell, and now some extra work. Oh, a little kickboxing by Elijah Tillery. Bo won't stand for that. Rock Newman, the manager of Riddick Bo, and a tag team comes in, and Elijah Tillery does a 360, a spill out of the ring. Pandemonium in the ring at the end of round number one. Elijah Tillery dumped off the apron, taken down by Rock Newman. And uh, at this point, I believe Tillery has been disqualified from the fight. Well, after that astonishing exit from the ring, we come to probably the most unusual and certainly the funniest entrance. This sequence was captured by the handheld camera of Steve Holdsworth, well known to Eurosport fight fans as a ringside commentator. This was one occasion when he was nearly lost for words, and there was another gem to come. On a majority vote, so one judge thought the Zulu Warrior won it, and you know it was that kind of fight. It was uh, difficult to score. Um, I, felt I gave two rounds level. He doesn't even know how to get out of the ring. Look. <laughs> 
Oh, well, he didn't know how to get in it, and he certainly doesn't know how to get out of it, but um, I'm delighted he did it. <laughs> Good lad. The Holdsworth camera was rolling again during what became known as the mother of all fights. The picture quality is questionable, but the action is without doubt of the classic variety. clear message from the next incident is defend yourself at all times, even after the fight is finished. Francis, this has got it now! One, Good this week. Two, well, three. well, 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 and Benton in big, big trouble. He's going to be, no, it's all over. For Louis he's wins in two rounds, then what a tremendous turn up for the books. Louis Vich gets himself smack in the title picture with a second round stoppage and destruction. Oh, goodness me, what's going on here? What an idiot. What an idiot. What a complete idiot. Stop this in the ring. Hold on, hold on. Can you hold? Everybody what keep calm now, please. Idiot. Can we stop this in the ring? Right now. Can everybody just idiot. stay there? Everybody, where you are, can we calm down, please? Can well, we simply calm down? He gets a very can serious thrashing. Sometimes boxers just don't know when they've had enough. A guy who was knocked out, the KO. who could not stand up straight, KO. arguing that he was okay. And his corner is even telling him no, no, no sense of continuing. <laughs> he was claiming that he was okay, well perhaps he was dyslexic and was really saying KO. For our next taste of boxing bedlam, we don't even manage to get into the ring. Sometimes the ticket selling hype boils over and the fighters can't wait to get the gloves on before they're exchanging much more than words. These were the extraordinary scenes when our old friend Riddick Bowe got together with his bitter rival Larry Donald for a pre-fight press conference. Well, as any great champion, I do what it takes to win. Mm. So he is going to win. You know, uh, it's all good. Mm. You know, naming this fight is the beast and the beauty, and I'm the beast master. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be doing any running. I'm going to be dancing. Yes. <laughs> dancing and stinging. I can tell you one thing. He's going to be beasted. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> really, if he does run, how do you counteract that? 
Well, I don't think Larry has faced anyone of my caliber, you know. Um, I'm not like a Jerry Williams who's going to stand right in front of him. I'm going to cut the ring off, and eventually he's going to have to fight, one way or the other. But he talks too much. That's why I don't like him. <laughs> well, you can look at me. I'm loaded with confidence. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. If you really think you're loaded, you wait till after I put my foot in your ass. There's whoever you're trying to say you don't think that would be possible? You know, you're trying and again, to say, let's oh, I know try to say both. How, 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 how you figure that? What? Oh, 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 how you figure that? Oh, 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 which Bo won on points. When Herbie Hyde came face to face with Michael Bent for the cameras, it suddenly became crash bang wallop, what a photograph. Well, that all gave the fight plenty of unexpected publicity. I just wonder who picked up the dry cleaning bills. I spent more than 40 years as a ringside commentator and reporter and never ceased to be astonished at how the big punchers could take out an opponent with a single blow. Try not to blink. As we watch our first example here, it gives a whole new meaning to a one-punch finish. And we are set for round number one. Wilfredo Pepe Muniz and Hector Sanjurjo. Both from Massachusetts. quite the fastest knockout in history. It was a couple of seconds slower than the 10.5 seconds finish when Al Couture knocked out Ralph Walton while he was still adjusting his gum shield in his corner at Lewiston, Maine in 1946. My old mate Frank Bruno was one of the heaviest punching British heavyweights of all time. Know what I mean. Here comes explosive evidence as he bombs former world champion Jerry Kutzia to a first round defeat in what I consider was one of the most devastating performances of Frank's eventful career. ...into this Wembley arena, knowing that one punch from either side could end this dramatically. What a welcome Bruno got tonight, the biggest reception he's ever had in his life as he came to the ring to face this giant South African, Jerry Kutzia, the former heavyweight champion of the world. One man looking for the comeback road, the other man looking for the glory that comes with going for the big one. Bruno, one fight, perhaps only one punch away from a crack. And the world title, the right's got him. Inside a minute, he's got him. One right hand from the blue, the cool Bruno. Perhaps hit as hard as he's ever been hit. One minute gone. Now he might be dangerous. Bruno mustn't get careless. Kutsia's cut underneath the left eye. He's been cut many times in recent fights, and he's cut again. What a start by Bruno. 
55 seconds. A right hand and another. Surely he can't get it over inside a run. But has only been stopped twice. He's got him again. He won't get up from that. He's stretched out over the photographers. He'll never make it. He's out. Bruno is on his way to a crack at the world title. You can hardly believe it. Terry Lawless can hardly believe it. That's the most amazing win we've seen in the British ring for many years. And Cooks here is still out. Under two minutes. Bruno has got to be the hardest hitting heavyweight in the world today. And he's just proved it on the former heavyweight champion of the world, the South African Jerry Cooks here. 30 years old, still out from some of the most astonishing punches that have been thrown anywhere in the world for years. 24-year-old Bruno relishing every moment of this. Here's the first knockdown. The fight wasn't a minute old when it happened. Look at that pile driving. Right hand that went right through from the shoulder. And believe me, Kutsia did well to get up from that. Here it comes again from overhead. And when he got up, he had a cut underneath the left eye. Not that that mattered. It wasn't about cuts, it was about power. Now we're seeing the final moments, which were quite extraordinary. He missed with those. The left got him on the right to the temple, actually, and he went out backwards. Six years after those bombs from Bruno, Lennox Lewis was unleashing similar ferocious punches against Donovan Razor Ruddock for a victory that was to see him crowned heavyweight champion of the world. Lennox had Ruddock down and nearly out in the first round. Only the bell saved him. Ruddock had given Mike Tyson two hard fights and most good judges thought he'd be too hot to handle for Lewis, but Lennox finished the job in the second with some devastating combinations. Ruddock had been verbally belittling Lewis ever since their amateur days in Canada when they had some spiteful sparring sessions. But when it came to the real thing, he just couldn't handle the Lewis power in what was one of the most impressive displays of Lennox's career. The fight was originally billed as a championship eliminator, but as Riddick Bowe declined to make a title defence, Lewis was declared WBC champion without throwing a punch. It seemed like a paper crown at the time, but he's since proved himself well worthy of the title. They say that the last thing a fighter loses is his punch. As we see here in replay, old George Foreman, a fighting grandfather, was taking heavy punishment and trailing on points against Michael Moura. Then, amazingly, in round 10, he produced a slow-motion punch from his memory to become world heavyweight champion for a second time. Shot that missed. George is so tired, though, Jim. If he misses a punch, he goes completely off balance. I have to give him all the credit in the world, but again, he's a 45-year-old man in a young man's game. But look at look at that competitive spirit coming out now. Straight right hand landing for Foreman. He's had a pretty good round here in number 10. Is that on goes four on a right hand? An unbelievably close in right hand shot. The punching preacher can hardly believe it. Goes down on his knees to say thanks while Moore is trying to get up off his. This was one time when Foreman wanted to be away from the madding crowd. It As referee Joe Cortez waved his arms over Moore, George Foreman knelt in prayer in the neutral corner. Ray Mercer doesn't have the reputation for being a devastating puncher, but Tommy Morrison must have felt he was carrying a sledgehammer in his hands in this stunning fifth round of their WBO World Heavyweight title fight. Two good right hands, and now Mercer on Morrison in the corner, and Mercer's all over him, and Morrison in trouble! And Morrison goes down for the first time in his career, and that is it! That's it, the it fight is, it. is over. Ray Mercer has won it, he successfully defended his WBO Heavyweight Championship.
Johnson's being told the fight is over. He's still telling him he wants to go on and fight, yet he doesn't realize the fight's over. That's how hard a punches he took. He really is in another world right now. It's going to take him a few minutes to recuperate. As we see here, the trouble started for Morrison when Mercer trapped him in a corner. In my view, the referee should have stepped in before the last three or four punches were delivered. Morrison was out on his feet and completely defenceless, and these last murderous punches should never have been allowed. <laughs> Now fasten your safety belts for a series of knockout punches right out of the top draw. It's not only punches to the head that can bring a sudden climax. Just look at this paralyzing first round left of the body from hot prospect Floyd Mayweather against Kino Rodriguez. He is a tremendous fighter. If you're oh, that left hook to the body put Rodriguez down. Left hook to the body, I think, that did him in. Yeah. He set him up pretty nicely because as Rodriguez was coming in, he was starting to bring his hands up to guard his face. Floyd was good enough to go to the body. Good left hook to the body, to the ribs, did the damage. And then Mayweather brought a whole new meaning to rope a dope. Got right in his face. Got a little dance for the fans as well. From rope dancer to circus acrobat and a would be Fred Astaire. Who else? The Prince Nassim Hamed. Oh, how about that one? Oh dear. I don't think that's a Victor Sylvester Jr. was dancing to there. The saving grace for Naz is that as well as clowning in the ring, he can also fight, as he proves here in his earliest professional performances. That's about all. And now he's won both his professional fights in the second round now, Nassim Mohamed. Is he a southpaw or is he a southpaw, Jim Mohamed? I'm not... I think I'm not sure he knows himself. So he's an amateur, he was. Uh, depends on Moody's and Rage. He's switch, switch, uh, switch heading. He's, he's doing as he pleases here. He's becoming a little bit untidy. I'd like to see him stand off a little bit, just give himself some punching room. He's, he's doing exactly as he pleases. Oh, no, the boy was going to get stopped there. Quite right. Oh, and there, go, there goes the tumble, the first of the, the circus act. But that's the third fight on the turn that he's won in the second round. And here is again now. Well, it was nice the way he just uh, burst into life. He switched to, to orthodox and threw, throwing a very effective right hand. Nice punches, nice variety, takes nothing back. Just stays right on Norman's top. Norman just completely lost the place by now. He just can't get his act together. And gentlemen, please. He keeps the pressure going. Ladies and gentlemen. Finish the job nicely. In 55 seconds of the yeah, second round. At this round, point, Norman didn't really know what was happening to him. The contest. Norman was since building that foundation to his career, Naz, of course, has gone on to become a boxing idol whose ring entrances often take longer than his fights. As you're about to witness, nothing is more thrilling in the boxing ring than when a fighter climbs off the canvas to win in spectacular fashion. Our first fight is one of the most sensational world championship wars of recent years, featuring that brave warrior, Dennis Andres, who more than meets his match here in Australian Ironman, Jeff Harding. <laughs> Emmanuel's 
Stewart told Dennis in the corner in between rounds, keep throwing that right hand. He, he can hit him with it, and no man can take that punch for long. Jeff Harding has not only taken it, but he's also countered with good punches of his own, and there goes Harding down. Two, three, four, Jeff Harding getting up five, with a smile on his six, face, and seven, Alex, a mystery blow. I didn't really see yeah. a... A big enough punch to Harding recovered and started to take control of the fight in a viciously contested 11th round, in which both boxers took heavy punishment. Look at the, the Andre's head. <laughs> All right, look at it, look at Andre's it. leaning on Harding, attempting to keep him, and keep him on a rope. Nifty little it. sidestep by Jeff Harding. That's the first time he's made a move on the rope. Oh, tre tremendous body punching by Jeff Harding. And it shows on Dennis Andres, who's covering up. A little bit of a wobble in Dennis Andres right there for those four body punches. And that right sends Andres back, and for the first time, Dennis Andres giving the appearance of a man in trouble. If Hardy could dig down and, and throw and land a series of power punches, Joe Cortez might stop it. 15 seconds left in the 11th round. Dennis Andres ought to throw a punch. Joe Cortez looking closely. Inside five seconds here in the 11th. That's it. You know, we said at the top of the show. Oh, and again, oh. Andres is rocked early by a left from Harding. Boy, this, this round not even 10 seconds old, and Andres against the rope. Dennis Andres will not give up his title without a fight. Dennis Andres' legs appear to be very stiff. He doesn't seem to have a lot underneath him. If Jeff Hardy could put together a series... Oh! Oh, and there it is! The combination of Andres is down. There have been few more exciting fighters in the British ring in recent years than Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. They had some real up and downers and some low moments. I think Eubank was suffering more indignity than pain here in round six. Given plenty of time to get over that. There's an obligatory foul proof protectors have to be worn. Three rounds later, he was briefly down again before unleashing a ferocious winning attack. Well, ben is the one at the moment who has been prepared to, to grit his teeth and show how much he wants this championship. You bank just a little bit negative. Well, a flat punch landed on the back of his leg actually as he was falling. I think he was falling for that. Oh, what a Opened him up with the left hand and then shot the right hand over and it connected. There's the countdown. If he did go down, the count would continue. Ben, ben shaking, Reg. Oh, ben, right to his boots, Jim. Ben is shaking. The eyes watch, Reg. This will be the finish of the Belgian. It's all over there. in the ninth round. And would you believe in uh, Ben's corner, they looked as though they were objecting to that for a minute. Why was it stopped? But I think he was right to dive in there. Apart from the, the eye closing, uh, he was also getting punished at that point, Jim. Earlier, we saw great white hope Tommy Morrison on the receiving end of a terrible pasting against Ray Mercer. And here he is in trouble again in the fifth round of a heavyweight battle with Carl The Truth Williams. Right. Ross from Carl Williams to the head of Tommy Morrison sends Morrison to the canvas. Williams connects with a right uppercut 
as Tommy Morrison goes down for a second time. He tried to tackle Williams. It seemed about the only thing he could do. Williams, with all that experience, now closes in on the younger Morrison and continues to hammer Morrison behind the head with his right hands. But Morrison was nothing if not all heart, and this is how he came back in the eighth round to force referee Mills Lane to save Williams from further punishment. There is a left hook that sends Williams back against the rope, and he is dazed. But can Morrison put him away? That has always been a big question. Williams wades back in again, throwing lefts and rights to Williams, who covers up. And referee Mills Lane looks at Carl Williams and says, that's it. And how about this for a comeback? Can you believe that you're watching the eventual winner as hot prospect Zahir Rahim takes a second round pounding? That's the second of two wins against Forbes, David. about to say Seven, all of has known the knockout in his professional career. He came on the hall. See the look he gets at here and he It was Raheem's turn to dish it out in round five after an amazing recovery. And so we come to our final section and some quite unbelievable incidents. First of all, we feature what I consider one of the strangest fight verdicts in ring history. Now, I won't spoil it for you by telling you the result, but see if you can guess the outcome, as exceptional IBF light welterweight champion Konstantin Shu battles with Leonardo Mass in Las Vegas. We join the fight in the closing moments of round one. <laughs> Is he trying to, he's claiming a foul, I believe. He is claiming a foul. Now, this is the third knockout. Let's take a look at it here, Sean. Okay, crack. Oh. Now, we didn't see if there, if there was a thumb in there, but uh, watch here again. I, I just don't know what he's backward, and the left hook is right on there. That, now, with these gloves, the, the, the Reyes gloves, like they are wearing, those thumbs are a bit long, and they, they could have stuck in, into. I tell you, I don't know what he's complaining about or what foul was committed there. He's, he hit me. Uh, he is in he, considerable saying, pain. He is saying my jaw is broken. Look at that. Look at his mouth. They can't move it. No, th they can't get any mouth. They can't get the mouthpiece out. They can't oh, get the mouthpiece out. I'm okay. sure the fight is over. This guy's not oh, going to fight anymore. Wow. This fight is over. The commission in the ring. Let's see if Michael in your attention, please. Referee Joe Cortez has called a halt to this bout. Due to an unintentional illegal blow, the fighter, the challenger, Leonardo Mas, was unable to continue. The physicians at ringside have determined he has a dislocated jaw. He is unable to continue. The blow that caused the damage was an unintentional illegal blow. 
Therefore, the bout under the rules of the Nevada State Athletic Commission is called a technical draw. <laughs> a one-round draw and an unintentional illegal punch. I never cease to be amazed at what those American boxing rulers conjure up. Now, here comes another strange decision. Who do you think will win this world title fight between Kino Hernandez and African super featherweight Azuma Nelson? We join it in the closing moments of round seven. Nelson's well behind on points. Nelson with his best moment of the night. Oh! He's hurt. He was here and there was a late shot. He went down, taking a point away from Azuma Nelson. The referee immediately steps in, recognizes the late blow, and takes a point away from Azuma Nelson. I think he hit him in the throat. He's... And he's still down. I can only think that the referee will give him uh, the necessary time to... Uh, Get himself back together again. Did he get yeah. a shot in the nose again? Yeah, a shot in the throat. He was looking at his throat. That's right, he got it in the throat. He was definitely after the bell. It was Nelson's greatest moment of the night. And he was continuing the barrage. We're going to take a look at it again with the real time. Listen to the bell here. While Hernandez was being examined by a doctor in the ring, no doubt a throat doctor, Nelson kept himself on the alert by using himself as a sparring partner. After one of the longest delays ever during a world title fight, just short of nine minutes, they returned to battle stations, and there was more fun and games to come in round eight of this extraordinary fight. Round eight. Hernandez has been dominating the fight, and he lands again with a left and a right. Still, Azuma Nelson's posed with that same problem. How do you get inside? Getting on the out of room. He's still got the same game plan. Well, the oh, oh. fight is shipped. Fall down. Up they got, and home did trot to the 12th and last round, with Hernandez staying on his feet to score a clear and well-deserved points victory. Staying up close, as I said, punching more often here, milking more time off the clock. Nelson just landed with the right. Six seconds left. And here comes Hernandez in his own corner, and there's the bell ending the fight. We finish this look at the wacky side of boxing with a fighter whose middle name could be Bedlam, Vinnie Pazienza. Here we see him at his wildest in a brawling battle with Dana Rosenblatt. And he slips and goes down. And I like the way he throws his punches. Doesn't waste a lot of motion. Doesn't get out of position. Got him with a right hand. Then he's starting to perform. What he needs to do is box. Needs to box. Here's where Vinny get, can get hurt. He's going to get hurt playing around with a kid who can punch. A kid who can score, too. Rosenblatt is not wasting any punches. Not at all. This has got to be the biggest crowd he's ever fought in front of. Great left hand. But he is doing a job. Fifteen seconds remaining in round three. He's keeping his calm. Rosenblatt's in total control right now. Vinny's got to try something. Oh, you know what it is? Vinny can't focus enough to throw a punch. Instantaneous opening that he sees. He scores. There you go. Vinny's got to do more head movement. He just can't stand in front of Rosenblatt. I've seen Pazienza fight a lot. Oh! Right hand! Right hand, and Rosenblatt is down. Unbelievable. That came from a, that came from Rhode Island. There we go.
That, the referee it's, should stop it. That's enough. That's, that's it. enough. It's all over. That's it. Oh, down goes the referee. referee. Down goes the referee. Vinny, Nathalie, and people are throwing stuff. Ice is flying into the ring. Rosenblatt is hurt. He is still out on his feet. Pazienza went crazy. And that's Boxing Bedlam.